welcome to this morning service. If you're joining us, we're just going to have a period of five minutes just as everyone settles down and listen to Mark.
Good morning, everyone. Good morning. A very warm welcome to St. Paul's today. Uh, for those of you who are here in the church, lovely to have you here with us. For those of you who are joining us online, uh, great to have you joining us wherever you are joining us from. It is wonderful to be together today for our service of Holy Communion. And it's very exciting today. We have uh, Rob. Rob's going to be preaching for us today, telling us about the call of God on his life. Let's pray for, uh, let's give a round of applause for Rob. Looking forward to that, Rob. Be great. No pressure. <laughs> um, folks, as we come together, let's just take a moment, shall we? Just a moment to pause, uh, a moment to gather ourselves together as we come before God. Gracious God, we give you thanks that you know us. You know what this week has held for us, with the highs and the lows, the joys and the challenges, the surprises that it has brought. We give you thanks for your presence with us throughout this week. And we give you thanks that you welcome us now with open arms, that you call us your children, and you long for us to know more of your love. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Sisters and brothers, grace and mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And we pray together, Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. So in a moment of stillness, let us confess our sins in penitence and in faith, firmly resolved to keep God's commandments and to live in love and in peace with all people. And we pray together. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned in thought and word and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been. Help us to amend what we are and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. And so, Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins, Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in life eternal through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Our special prayer for this Sunday, the 18th Sunday after Trinity. God, our Judge and Saviour, teach us to be open to your truth and to trust in your love, that we may live each day with confidence in the salvation which is given through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. So our first reading for today is taken from Paul's letter to the Philippians, chapter 4, verses 1 to 9. Therefore, my brothers and sisters, you whom I love and long for, my joy and crown, that is how you should stand firm in the Lord, dear friends. I plead with Eudodia and I plead with Cytica to agree with each other in the Lord. Yes, and I ask you, loyal yoke fellow, Help those people who have contended at my side in the cause of the gospel, along with Clement and the rest of my fellow workers whose names are in the book of life. Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again, rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Whatever you have learned or received or heard from me or seen in me, put it into practice 
and the God of peace will be with you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I love that great call of Paul at the end of his letter to the Philippians. He writes that letter while he's in prison in Rome. And one of the last things he wants to say to his beloved brothers and sisters in Philippi is rejoice. Rejoice in the Lord because the Lord is near. So we're going to stand now. We're going to rejoice in the Lord. If you're at home, you're welcome to see. If you're here in the church, we're going to clap. We're going to do a bit of dancing. Does that sound good? Does that sound good? There we go. Let's stand. Uh, what's the first song, Mark? We're going to sing number 45. Bring them all in. If that's singing, if you're at home here, dancing, clapping, bring them all in.
rehearsing and singing at home as well. And uh, if you're here in the church, please stay standing for our gospel reading. So hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. And it's from Matthew chapter 22, verses 1 to 14. Jesus spoke to them again in parables, saying, The kingdom of heaven is like a king who prepared a wedding banquet for his son. He sent his servants to those who had been invited to the banquet to tell them to come, but they refused to come. Then he sent some more servants and said, Tell those who have been invited that I have prepared my dinner. My oxen and fattened cattle have been slaughtered, and everything is ready. Come to the wedding banquet. But they paid no attention and went off, one to their field, another to their business. The rest seized his servants, ill-treated them, and killed them. The king was enraged. He sent his army and destroyed those murderers and burned their city. Then he said to his servants, The wedding banquet is ready, but those I invited did not deserve to come. Go to the street corners and invite to the banquet anyone you find. So the servants went out into the streets and gathered all the people they could find, both good and bad, and the wedding hall was filled with guests. But when the king came in to see the guests, he noticed a man there who was not wearing wedding clothes. Friend, he asked, how did you get in here without wedding clothes? The man was speechless. <coughs> then the king told his attendants, tie him hand and foot and throw him outside into the darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. For many are invited, but few are chosen. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Uh, folks who are here in the church, do take a seat. If you're at home, you may want to take a seat as well. And it's wonderful to have Rob coming to speak to us today. For those of you who don't know, Rob and Helen uh, have felt a call on their life from God to move to Nicaragua to be missionaries there with EMI. So Rob is going to share something about that in his sermon today. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning, Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you, James. I had flashbacks there to deepest, darkest lockdown when we were in our front room, watching James on the TV, banging the world's smallest tambourine. I think he broke it at one point, we all sorts of crazy things, and we, we very much enjoyed that and had a lot of fun. Um, but yes, thank you, James. James asked me to speak to you guys this morning about uh, our plans, going to Nicaragua, coming up, but also about these passages um, we've just been listening to, um, and starting with Paul's letter to the Philippians. Now, I don't know about you, but when I first hear a passage, there's and one bit that jumps out at me. Uh, and again, I don't know about you, but in that passage uh, to the Philippians, it was the line, don't be anxious. Um, maybe it's because I was preparing a sermon, but um, don't be anxious was the line that jumped out, which was then followed by the thought, well, that's, that's all right for you to say, Paul. You're a stalwart of the faith, you know, a bastion of the early church. Um, I've got a lot of things to be anxious about. I'm quite stressed. Um, you can't just say, don't be anxious. But of course he doesn't. He follows it straight up with some proactive advice by prayer and petition presenting requests to the Lord. Um, and that's having just reminded us that the Lord is near. Rejoice, says James, and saying, Rejoice, the Lord is near. And those things certainly help when you're looking to address your anxiety. But he doesn't stop there. He goes on to say and give some really proactive advice. Say, he's saying to, to, to focus on what is good. Wonderful list. What is true, what is noble, what is pure, what is lovely, what is praiseworthy. Think on these things. And it's very true, isn't it? It's great advice. Sometimes we can obsess with the things we're anxious about, that we're stressed about. But actually, if we move our focus to what uh, is in our corner, what our assets are, what is going for us, uh, quite often our anxieties can melt away. So that's a nice clear message. I think that that's great. I wish I could say the same for our gospel reading uh, today, uh, which I did raise a few eyebrows when I, when I read it for the first time. And, and again, I'm sure you're paying attention, but just to, just to recap, um, we've got this fascinating parable that Jesus tells about the banquet. Uh, and the king, he's having a, a wedding for his son, 
and he sends out his servants to, to invite everybody to the wedding. And the first odd thing is that people just don't come. They just turn around and they walk away. And you think, this is strange, is it not? If the royal family in this country were to have a, have a wedding, if Prince William was to invite you to his, his wedding, you're going to want to be there, aren't you? You're going you're gonna to be thinking, what's the food going to be like? It's going to be amazing. going to be on TV. Elton John's going to play at the reception. It's going to be a blast. I want to be there. And yet, they just, they just don't come. So he sends out some more servants, and still they don't come. What's more, they ill treat the servants, and they, and they kill them. This is extraordinary. And then you go, ah, oh, I get it. Jesus is, this is a parable. We're talking about the Old Testament prophets going out and being rejected, and perhaps he's now talking about those servants. He's looking forward to a time after his resurrection where the, the early church, the, the Christians, uh, the early Christians are going out and they're being martyred, telling people to come to the banquet, the great banquet in heaven. So it's a, it's, a, it's a prophecy and it's a, it's a parable. But then there's this rather awkward bit where the king sends his army to, uh, to, to kill those who murdered his servants and to burn down, burn down the city. And what's more, there's this poor fellow who turns up to the wedding at the end in the wrong clothes. If that's not embarrassing enough, he's then chucked out of the wedding, tied up and thrown to the wailing and the gnashing of teeth. Good grief, I'm looking at this and I'm going, well, this is uh, above my theological pay grade to try and explain this one. Okay. But what I would love you to do is to read that carefully, think of the hardest questions you can and post them straight to James and Dave and, <laughs> uh, and Billy. But there are two, two things I very much took away from reading this, this passage. The first, the first was if James asked you to preach, check the reading before you agree to it. <laughs> and the, the, first, the, the first was that... Um, God wants his kingdom to be full. He doesn't want an empty kingdom. And when he invites us to that banquet, he's not going to take the first name. But he's going to go out and he's going to invite on the corners, the streets. He's going to gather everyone up. He wants us all there at the banquet. And the second is that there are some times in life, and there are some times when reading the Bible, that I just don't quite understand all of it. And that's okay. Don't be anxious, says Paul. Don't fret. Focus on what is good, what is right. And I, I'm pretty sure as Paul is writing that, what's more noble, what is, what is more praiseworthy than the person of Jesus himself? And I was reminded that actually there are times when I'm not going to understand the Bible. There's times when I'm not going to understand what God is doing in my life. Um, but I do understand the person of Jesus. I do understand how he loves me and how he died for me. And in that, I am brought into reconciliation with God. And I get to enjoy that great banquet. Not that it's, it's not good to ask questions. We should always ask questions. And I'm sure we've all got questions. My, my list of questions is growing every day. Uh, and yet this side of heaven, we won't always have the answers to our questions. We look to the day when we get a chance to ask God face to face. But actually focus on what is good. Focus on what, what is true, what is noble. What is trustworthy? And this idea of focus reminds me of another passage also uh, in the book of Matthew, chapter 14, where uh, the disciples are on a boat in the lake and they look out across the lake and they see the person of Jesus walking on the surface of the lake and they're amazed. And Peter says, Jesus, if that's you, call me. Call me out. And Jesus says, Peter, come. And he steps out of the boat. And for the first time, I think probably last time in human history, Peter, the only human other than Jesus, to step foot on water, walks across the surface of this lake. And he's intent, he's focused on Jesus. His confidence is, Jesus, is in Jesus, and he knows he can walk on the surface. It's an extraordinary moment in time. And yet the wind then picks up, and Peter's focus is lost. He's probably picking up on the waves as well, and he starts to fear, and he starts to sink. It loses the focus on Jesus. Thankfully, when we lose our focus on Jesus, he doesn't lose his focus on us. And Jesus reaches out and lifts Peter out from, from drowning and, and gathers him back into to the boat. But there was a, a, really, a really important passage for Helen and I, that particular passage back in 2011. And there was a book that we were studying. Many of you might know it by John Ortberg. If you want to walk on water, you've got to get out of the life group at the time, we were really exploring this, what that meant. Uh, and it's one of those books where the title pretty much explains the entire book. It's an encouragement 
to not get stuck in your comfort zone where things are easy. But actually, if you really want to walk on water, sometimes you've got to get out of that boat. And at the time, I had been in a job that I was not very happy for quite a long time. Uh, and um, I was not thriving. I was just going through the motions. I had a lot of security. I was in my boat. I had a lot of security, financial security, good health care provision, all of that. But I wasn't living life to the full like I believe Jesus calls us to. And at the same time, at left field, a opportunity arose for us. Some friends, this is in 2011, some friends, Helen and I from New Zealand, uh, said to us, guys, you love rugby, we've got the Rugby World Cup coming up in, in New Zealand, why don't you guys come over and um, watch the rugby with us? I said, that's a fantastic idea. Helen, let's, let's go to New Zealand and watch the rugby. Helen reminded me that she's a teacher. Uh, she has one week off in the autumn half term. Uh, and actually that particular week there weren't any games taking place so there's a few flaws in your plan here Rob she said but, and this idea did come from Helen where she said, but what about if we took an entire year off, travelled the world and go to the Rugby World Cup at, at that point, I said really? she said, yes you, you're not enjoying work, we're in this funny place, we're being encouraged to step out maybe this would be a real chance for us to spend some time, take a step back and listen to God's calling I said, you don't need to convince me, you had me at going to the Rugby World Cup, I'm there. So we did, we went, Helen handed in, uh, well, she got a year off from, from school, I got a whole period off from my job. We had an incredible adventure, and by the time we got to New Zealand, England had already been knocked out of the Rugby World Cup, but that didn't hold us back from enjoying <laughs> ourselves. Um, Travel around the world, and we had three months in Latin America, in the second half of our trip, and we, we did spend some time learning Spanish out there. And we also got a chance to get involved in a fantastic project with an organisation called Engineering Ministries International. And I'll tell you a bit more about them in, in a moment, but the project that just slotted perfectly in the, time, in the time we had in that area in Honduras involved helping a team of engineers and architects design a uh, pastor's training centre and a Christian retreat for an incredible charity and ministry in Honduras. Uh, I got to work on the Energy Master Plan how the whole site would be powered using partly renewable energy. Helen worked in the field as a surveyor. She said she only held a stick, but it was a lot more than that. She had to hold the stick really well in the right place, and they, <laughs> they measured out the whole site for topography. She even went in a plane and flew over the site, took photos, and we were part of this incredible team for a space of 10 days, two weeks, helping this ministry design uh, what it was they were going to do there, build the foundations for an opportunity for real kingdom change preaching and reaching the lost uh, in Honduras. And as part of that trip, we also got to go uh, through the EMI local office. So the way EMI works is you have these volunteers start these projects, but it's the local office that delivers them. And that first seed was sown that, that God might be calling us to, to get involved and join staff on something like this. That was in early 2012. Um, five years later, various twists and turns uh, through our careers, and so mine in particular, I was in a much better place. I was enjoying my job. Um, we'd been called out of the boat, and it had been a really good thing. Uh, but this call to, to EMI came back to us. Actually, it was here at St. Paul's Old and he'd arranged a men's prayer breakfast, and we listened to uh, Albert. Some of you might know Albert. He told us his inspirational story about how God had called him to be a missionary in, in Africa, and we heard some of the incredible things he did. And I was reminded how Jesus had called us to live life to the full and not just remain in our comfort zones. And I came back and I shared that with Helen. And Helen was quite dissatisfied at work at the time and she was thinking, well, maybe this is actually that, that moment when we're called to EMI. We said we'd pray about it. We went to harvest, um, so spring harvest that Easter, which is a Christian uh, retreat, Bible study conference, some of you might know it. The theme was only the brave. We spent a lot of time praying and, and listening to testimonies, amazing testimonies about uh, particularly overseas missionaries responding to the call and seeing God working in wonderful ways. And we felt convinced that that was, that was a message for us. And we thought, let's progress this. We spoke to the UK directors of EMI. Uh, some of you remember last year I went out as a volunteer on another EMI trip uh, to Nicaragua. Um, really exciting trip, a chance to help uh, a series of local churches there build a Bible institute another training centre, a Christian retreat camp. And we went out as a family, had a great uh, time in Nicaragua with 
that summer. And we, after a long further period of prayer, decided that this was the calling to our life, a big move, but that God was calling us to be missionaries in Latin America with EMI. We applied, did a series of interviews. James attended one. He wrote us a nice reference. It seemed to do the trick because they offered us uh, the job. And we accepted it in April uh, this year. So it's very exciting. So what will we be doing? Well, EMI is an organisation that gathers architects, engineers, surveyors, project managers to deliver projects for lots of local charities. Um, churches, hospitals, schools, and they help these teams build these sites. Uh, but it's a lot more than just bricks and mortar. Uh, it's about building platforms, platforms for missions opportunities for people to hear about the good news, hospitals where people can be healed physically but also reached spiritually. It's really exciting kingdom building stuff, it's, it's been our calling but the, the really exciting thing now is it's not just our calling but it's also yours because we're, we're incredibly excited to be partnering with St Paul's Old Board, um, uh, having met with James many times like to say that you are our ascending church. Um, we might be relocating, but we're not leaving uh, this, this church. Uh, we don't intend to just become drawing pins in a map at the back of church. Um, we're only going to be a Zoom call away uh, in Nicaragua. And we're going to need uh, your help. We are going to need your help very much in this, uh, in two particular ways. Most importantly, uh, through prayer, there are going to be moments when the wind is blowing and the waves are there where it's going to be a bit overwhelming. There will be moments when God's doing things that we don't fully understand uh, and we're going to need your support and prayer. Uh, and that starts now. Um, we are going through this process. We weren't expecting to be doing this in the midst of a global pandemic. Um, we have got issues letting out our flat. We've got a huge uh, fundraising uh, effort underway and we're really grateful for your prayers. And Andy and Jeff and Joy have kindly agreed to be part of our sort of prayer champion team and there'll be lots of opportunities to pray. And whilst we're out there, we, whilst we're out there, we hope to do the odd after service prayer call uh, at the back of church here for anyone who'd like to join. Uh, after church will be about one in the morning our time, so we might be a little bit bleak under the eyes. Uh, <laughs> drinking lots of good nick drank with coffee, I'm sure. Um, so prayer. And then the other is, is financially. I'll be frank about it. We've got a, we've got a big financial target we have to raise about £4,000 a month on going to support and just a one-off uh, mobilisation cost alone before we can go of about £37,500. Uh, we've done a little video, some of you might have seen it already, that is um, on the church Facebook and YouTube site um, which gives a bit more details of that if you'd like to check it out. So we have a website which has more details, www.emi. And we've been blown away by the generosity of so many of you. We've not really pushed this up until now, um, but yet already we've been um, really encouraged by many of you coming up to us, and it makes a real difference. We're not quite sure how we're going to get there. Um, I'm glad to say we're 40% of the way down both our funds already, um, but we've still got a long way to go. Uh, and all of your uh, support, thoughts and prayers are greatly appreciated. We've actually got some sheets that Helen is going to just wave in the air now. If you'd like to take one of these, it gives a bit more information about what we're up to. And if you want to sign up to our newsletter, um, and you want, or if you want to join the support prayer group, uh, or you'd like to pledge, there's a chance to do that there with a gift aid at the back. So there we go. There's a bit about um, what we're up to. Uh, thank you for listening to me this morning. Obviously, I'm talking up here, but this is very much Helen and I and the kids going out. We're going to be learning Spanish for the first eight months. Helen's going to be working in the office at EMI as well as getting involved in many local charities and we're looking forward to tell you more about those when we know more uh, ourselves. But this is very much a, um, a huge adventure. It's a massive um, change for us as a family. But we're so excited to be doing this together with the support of you, our Ascending Church. And we look forward to 
sharing that banquet together, they're following a calling in the same way the king sends out those, uh, those servants. Um, it's about calling. Whether your calling is to Nicaragua, Islington, or to Tesco's, we're all called in our various different ways, and it's been very exciting to share after. Rob, thank you. I think the, the point of it being all our call is so important to bear in mind. You know, when the, as Robert said, when the king sends people out, it's because God longs for everyone to be welcomed into the kingdom. Not many of us will get a chance to go to Nicaragua as missionaries, but that is the call that God has put on Rob and Helen's heart. But we get to share in that as part of their, their home church and as part of the worldwide church of God through our prayers and financial support. So I just want to take just a moment of silence now, and just in that silence, just be reflecting on, on what Rob has shared and reflect on how you might be a part of that. And then Andrew's going to come and lead us in our prayers. Let us continue with the time of prayer. Gracious God, we give you thanks for the words of St. Paul, who describes those Christians around him as a joy and a crown, and written in the book of life. Lord, we thank you that we are all servants in the book of life and of love. Help us also to keep rejoicing in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Gracious God, we hold our community before you, both here in church, online, and those connected to us. Through prayer and petition, answer our call and keep us from worry and anxiety. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, we thank you for James, Kaz, Emily, Sophie and Henry, their lives in our lives. May you lead them as the Spirit calls. We pray for the challenges they meet and thank you for the passion James has for the broader church. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Heavenly One, we thank you for the passion and desire embedded also in Rob and Helen's heart. Thank you that their housing situation is resolved. And thank you for the money that they have raised so far. Lord, in your mercy. We ask that you continue to hold Rob and Helen, Chloe and Josh in the palm of your hand, Lord. Continue to aid and help them as they prepare to go to Nicaragua. We ask in particular that you meet their financial needs and the rest of the funds that are needed. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Gracious Lord, we ask that the COVID situation in Nicaragua, where Rob and Helen are going, will continue to be a safe place. Lord, in your mercy. And again, we thank you so much for Rob and Helen's gifts, both here in church and in their small group that they lead and the churches that they've helped to restore. And we also we thank you for the way that you have called them out to help build a joint building project for several churches in another part of the world under the umbrella of EMI. We thank you for the unity that has brought that project together in particular those Christians in Nicaragua. 
Loving God, our God, who brings us to your banqueting table, keep us also steadfast and together, keeping us a part of Rob and Helen's life as they set out on this new journey. And as we join you at your banqueting table, Lord, so we also sit next to one another and next to Rob and Helen in this journey. Lord, in your mercy. We pray especially for Chloe and Josh, where friendships forged take time to adjust in a new place. Lord, in your mercy. Lastly, we think of those around us who are sick in body, in mind, in spirit, and need your healing touch, your strength and your presence. We especially pray for Jerry, who's recovering, Steve, who's in hospital, for Douglas, for Lorraine, for Israel and Kate, for Roy, for Bian, but also for those others dear to us who are no longer with us. May they rest eternal. Comfort their families, hold them in your precious heart. And very lastly, we just thank uh, you for this uh, new baby, so for Dan and Jennifer, that beautiful being that's come into the world. Merciful Father, accept, accept these prayers, prayers the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, Andrew. If you're here in the church, would you like to stand? I hope you want to do so as well. Sisters and brothers, do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Let's share with each other. A sign of Christ's peace. <laughs>
around, please have your hands out in front of you. If you'd like to receive a blessing, please uh, put your hands across over your chest. Uh, communion will be given in silence, so I'll say from the front um, the body of Christ, and I'll give it to each person in silence. And as is uh, the current requirements, we're going to be receiving, everyone will be receiving in just one time, so just the bread, and I will receive the wine on behalf of us all. Sisters, brothers, the Lord is here. Yes. Lift up your hearts. Yes. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Yes. Father, you made the world and love your creation. You gave your Son, Jesus Christ, to be our Saviour. And his dying and rising has set us free from sin and from death. And so we gladly thank you with saints and with angels, praising you and singing. So, Father, we remember all that Jesus did. In him we plead with confidence his sacrifice made once for all upon the cross, bringing before you the bread of life and the cup of salvation. We proclaim Christ's death and resurrection until he comes in glory. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. And so, Lord of all life, help us to work together for that day when your kingdom comes. That day when justice and mercy, love, hope and peace will be seen in all the earth. Would you look with favour on your people? Gather us in your loving arms and bring us with all the saints to feast at your table in heaven. And all this we ask through Christ and with Christ and in Christ. In the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and all glory are yours, O loving Father, for ever and ever. Amen. So joining in here in church and at home, let's pray together the prayer that Jesus taught his friends to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. So we break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we will share. draw near with faith. Receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ which he gave for you and his blood which he shed for you. Eat
eat and drink in remembrance that Christ has died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
So let's say the prayer of thanksgiving after communion together. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. Amen. Uh, a few notices. First of all, if you would like to find out more information about how to support Rob and Helen in prayer or in financial support, uh, if you're here in the church, you can grab them and take one of their handouts um, before you go. If you're at home, jump onto the website, which was rob emi-quails.com. emi-quails.com. There's also a link to it from the church Facebook page. Do be holding Rob and Helen, Josh and Chloe. Uh, in your prayers over the coming weeks. Our midweek groups, uh, midday prayer on Wednesday, midday uh, Bible study immediately after that, and uh, the evening groups are here in the church and in the Eleanor, both at 7.30, are continuing to take place uh, this week, and uh, the Bible in the pub is live streamed at 8 o'clock on Wednesday. Our youth groups are in full action this week. Jessica's looking at me. And we have, we have a number of things happening over the coming weeks, which is very exciting. Uh, uh, on Tuesday the 20th in the evening, we will be having our AGM and APCM. We'll, we'll be electing church wardens uh, and new PCC members. There are four spaces for PCC. There are uh, two deanery synod reps uh, to be elected as well, and two spaces for church warden. Um, if you'd like to stay as church warden, please do, or if you'd like to stand as church warden, please do have a conversation with me. And I'm delighted that Neil and Fiona are willing to stand again for another term, but if you would like to stand, uh, please do have a conversation with me about uh, what the role might entail. Um, I apologise that the forms aren't available this week, but if you would like to stand for any of those roles, please do speak to me or drop me an email and we'll find a way of getting a form to you this week. They'll also be available next Sunday. On Sunday the 25th of October, we have our All Souls service. Um, this is one of our bigger services of the year, our time of remembering those who have gone before us in the way of Christ, those we love but see no longer. Um, obviously we are limited by numbers this year, so we're having a service at 4 o'clock and a service at 6 o'clock, and we will be streaming onto the Facebook page the 4 o'clock service. Um, again, apologies that the the forms for, uh, for saying you're going to come are not available this week. I do apologise for that. But hopefully um, they will be available from tomorrow. And uh, you can always just drop me an email if you would like to come to one of those services and have names read out. And then on the 31st, Jessica, what day is the 31st? On Saturday the 31st, we will be holding a light party. Uh, we do this every year. Uh, it's a bit of a... Uh, celebration of joy and of God's light at a time when the world looks to darkness. Um, it, again, it'll be slightly different this year, so you'll need to slot, sign up for sort of bubble slots, as it were. Um, but all information about that will be on our Facebook page this week. Uh, you can find out more by speaking to Jessica as well. Fantastic. Uh, the other notice, of course, uh, is to re slightly repeat what I announced last week, uh, which is that uh, I'll be moving on from St Paul's, for those of you who don't know already, to become the next vicar of St Mary Islington. Uh, and my last Sunday here will be the 13th of December. Uh, I just want to say um, I've been hugely touched by a number of comments uh, I've already received this week. And uh, this is a very strange time for Kaz and I, because obviously we, we feel excited about what God is calling us to. Uh, I hope we never move somewhere where we're not excited about it. <laughs> But at the same time, we already feel uh, a deep sense of sadness about preparing to say goodbye to all of you wonderful people. And uh, I think we're trying to hold those conflicting emotions together, perhaps not always that well. Um, but I'm, I'm really grateful, uh, and Kaz and I are really grateful for all the comments we've already received. Um, obviously, we're not going until the 13th of December, so there'll be plenty of times for goodbye, even in this strange uh, COVID situation. Uh, we'll find a way of doing it. Um, but we would, we would love your prayers. It's, it is a strange time, as I realise it's a strange time for, for this church as well. Um, but uh, we'd love your prayers. And please do be praying for, for Neil and Fiona in particular as church wardens, and for Billy and April and Dave as clergy 
uh, as they prepare for a period without, without a vicar uh, when I leave. Um, but thank you so much for all the comments we've all received. Yeah, hugely, we're hugely grateful for those. I think those are all the notices, unless I've missed anything. Next Sunday, actually. Oh, Tim, come up here and tell us how you got on in the marathon. <laughs> come on. I don't really know what to say. I've just uh, I got on really well. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, um, I ran 26.1 miles around London, including about, I don't know, about five miles in the park at, at the end of it. Um, Tim, I'm a little Sorry? A little louder. A little louder, sorry, I'll, I'll speak more into the mic. Um, uh, yeah, it was, it was a horrible day for it, but it was, uh, it was a good, it was good. So thanks for, uh, thanks for all your support. Uh, big thanks to Rob Quayle and Rob Adamson Leather, who came out and ran with me for the last sort of, uh, sort of five, three to five miles. So that was much appreciated to help me that final spot towards the end. Um, and, and everyone else who came to the park. My, my, my family and some other friends who came to sort of cheer me on. It was great. Um, and yeah, and I, I, I've passed my target for Billy People now, which is great. So thanks for everybody who supported me and, and given me some money for that. Uh, but the page will stay open, uh, so you can still donate money to Billy People, which is great. And it'll probably stay open until I run the actual marathon, either next year or the year after. So thanks again. <laughs> Tim, you're very modest, but it's a wonderful achievement. Well done, especially in the pouring rain uh, that we had. But no, a huge congratulations, and, and thank you for uh, running and working so hard in your training to raise money for Ability Boat. Uh, very much appreciated. Um, the other thing to say is next Sunday our service will be a little bit different because we are going to be uh, baptising Alexandra next Sunday. Uh, so please do be holding her in your prayers. Alexandra and Jeff were married here last year and uh, they come when they are able to and have been coming for a few years. We're going to baptise Alexandra in our service next Sunday. Do you want to know how it's going to work? We'll all find out next week. But it's going to be a joyful celebration and a wonderful example of the fact that even though all these restrictions are happening and even though the world is as it is, God continues to call people into his kingdom, as Rob was saying earlier. Uh, a wonderful reminder of that. So please do be praying for Alexandra uh, as we baptise her next week. If you're here in the church, why don't you stand? If you're at home, you're welcome to stand as well. In a minute, we're going to sing, if you're at home, dance and clap if you're here, our final song, uh, number 113, Higher Than the Mountains That I Face. Uh, before that, let's pray for God's blessing. The peace of Christ which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and your minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you today, tomorrow and for all eternity. Amen. Amen. Number 113.
church, please just wait a moment when the service finishes and then make your way out through the doors at the back. But for all of us, may we go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Amen. Thank you everyone for joining us online. May you be blessed and may you know God's love and presence with you wherever you find yourselves this week. Take care.